Hi Paul here. Um, in this tutorial today I'm going to show you how to improve this photograph using channels <coughs> as a way of selecting um, all the elements in the image. Um, you may come across a photograph where you want to keep the background colour or the sky um, exactly the way it is. And if I go to use, say, let's say levels, and I adjust the gamma to bring out some of the detail in the foreground, you'll also notice that the background changes with it, which is not what we want in this photograph. What we actually want to achieve is uh, an image that goes from this to looking like this without any change in the background whatsoever. So let's get started. I'm just going to hit F on the keyboard to maximize the screen space. <coughs> now, um, also with this image I want to take out these elements here in the corners as a, as a means of cleaning the image up. So straight away I'm going to zoom up with uh, Command Plus or Control Plus if you're using a PC. I hold the space bar down and drag my mouse to this corner here. And then I'll use the Clone Stamp tool. And the way to use that is to simply hold the ALT key <coughs> for the target area that you want to drag the image from, duplicate from, click your mouse button, release the ALT key, and then you can start painting out. Now, when using the Clone Stamp tool, it's a good idea to run in line with the area that you're trying to change. And you can see I'm starting, starting to get a bit lighter here as well, so I'll bring the um, sample point in a bit closer. Clean that up a little bit more. There are other tools that you can use in Photoshop that will achieve this effect. This is more old school. Now, pan on over to the other side of the image. Use the clone stamp tool again. Resampling as I go along. Slowly painting that out. As I said, there are other tools you can use to um, eradicate areas like this, such as the content that we fill, which I'll cover in another tutorial. Okay, that's done. I'll just zoom back out. Oop, and there's an area there I didn't get rid of, so I'll just clean that up there. And it's done. <coughs> okay, the image has been cleaned up. So, what we want to do now is we want to brighten up this building and sign and uh, King Kong here uh, without actually altering the background um, sky color because I quite like that color. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a channels. Now, if you haven't got channels um, showing at the moment, what you can do is go to Window and Channels and that'll bring it up. Now, as you know, images are made, oh, an RGB image is made of three color channels. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a look at the red channel, then the green channel, and then the blue channel. And what I'm looking for is um, a channel where the background is quite uniform green and blue, and brighter than the rest. And you can see here in the blue channel the background is quite bright. And believe it or not, this will allow me to make a quite a clean selection of everything else but the sky. So, what I need to do now is the blue channel itself, I'm going to duplicate it by dragging it into the new layer icon, or the new channel icon, sorry, down here, and dropping it on there, and I'll get a copy. And this copy will no, in no way affect um, how the image looks at the moment. Okay, so uh, the next thing to do is to, I want to uh, it's br not only brighten the sky a little bit, but also darken everything else. So I'm going to choose Levels, Image Adjustments, Levels on this channel. And I'm going to use the back point, uh, black point slide. I'm going to slide it up to darken everything. And I'll just pull it to the end of this part of the graph here. 
and the white I will pull up to the start of this graph here, graph point here and you can see everything dark darkens up and I'll get this quite bright area as the sky so once you're happy with that just click OK now I'm actually going to use the magic wand to do a, to do a selection but if I use it I'm actually going to grab these areas here and these spots here so I'm going to clean those up before I start so making sure I've got black as the foreground color I'm going to use the paintbrush I'll make my brush a little bit bigger by using the brackets to the right of the letter P on the keyboard and I'll just paint those areas out okay that'll do anywhere else I might paint that out there as well these areas here I'll paint out and I'll zoom into the edge of this sign here and I'll start painting that out. Now I might get a bit of overspray on the paint so what I can do is in here is use the polygonal lasso tool and I'll just isolate the area itself that'll do just something like that and then I can continue painting inside without any fear of getting any paint on the outside of that area command D to deselect and I'll zoom back out. King Kong's hand might uh, present a bit of a problem so I'll just zoom up into there as well. Pounding across, zooming up. And I can paint some of that out as well. Making sure to adjust my brush as required. And that should do it. And I'll zoom back out. Command minus. I'll grab that spot there as well. Okay, now the image is looking quite clean. So what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to use the magic wand tool. The magic wand allows me to select whole blocks of colour or similar colour, depending on the tolerance value I have here. So 32 is a default, <coughs> so I'll just click somewhere in the sky background here. And you can see I get quite a nice selection, quite a clean selection as well. Problem is though, it hasn't grabbed any of these areas here or in between uh, the branches of the trees or this part of the sign here or in between the legs here. So what I'm simply going to do is say, uh, use the pull down menu uh, and choose select because we're working with the selection. I'll choose similar and you can see now it's grabbed all these areas here as well okay for, let's go back to the RGB um, channels so let me bring the image up now if I do any alterations now because I've got the sky uh, selected <coughs> it's only going to make a change to the um, background sky there so I need to invert the selection once again from the pull down menu select because we're working with the selection and I will inverse it and what that'll do, that'll only select everything uh, but what was previously, uh, instead of what was previously selected so I want to hide the selection so it's still there but I can't see it because sometimes it can be annoying to look at so I'll uh, hit Control H or Command H if you're using a Macintosh I'll zoom out a little bit and I'll use Levels image adjustments levels and what I'll do is I'll drag the middle point slider up the gamma to brighten everything up and you can see that everything becomes uh, a lot brighter but I'm losing contrast as well so I'll fix that by dragging in the black point slider a bit to punch those values continue adjusting and if I want I can drag the white point slider a little bit as well and once I'm happy with what I've got 
I'll drag that back a little bit. I can click OK. Now if I zoom up a little bit, what I can see is I now have you know plenty of detail in the in the dark areas here, which is what I want. Okay, next thing to do is we want to bring a bit more colour back into it. Because when I've uh, brightened up the gamma, I've actually lost some colour, so I'm going to make another adjustment. Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. And what I'll do is I'll simply just up the saturation value a little bit to bring out those colours and make it a bit more vibrant. And once I'm happy with what I've got, I'll click OK. And I'll deselect with Control D and I'll save the image. File, save as, give it a meaningful name, um, Gorilla, and I'll save it as a JPEG. Save. Okay. Okay, thanks for uh, watching and I hope you learned something. Bye.